not busy, which is good too. So welcome to Teachers Teaching yeah. Teachers. Um, we'll see who comes um, on uh, Wednesday evening in early August. But Aditya is here, and he was telling me about catching me up on the debate club or debate camp. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So basically, what ended up happening is that we ended up doing a debate course. So um, it was so I just, one of my classes was a debate course. It was a week long, and just like every day or every other day, we were getting a new topic. So like the first day we did like a more logic based topic where we weren't able to do like computer computer rise research. We was like, uh, this is a very it was this yeah. should sports. Let's think about sports. So that one we actually demonstrated because the class we, we were actually the oldest people in the Hi, class. Chris. Hello. Hello. DTS catch, catching us up on um, what happened at the debate camp. Nice. This okay. Course cool. debate course. This yeah. So the first, so the first day, um, or the second day, uh, we got our topic, and um, turns out that me and a couple friends were the oldest people in the class, so we actually got to demonstrate for everyone how a debate flows and stuff, which was a ton of fun. Um, the second day, we ended, we, uh, the third or fourth day, we got a new topic, which was, um, uh, it was something that I'd already done research for in the debate team. I think this was, like, before I started using AI in debate, but... Um, I just ended up yeah. using the resources from that, and we ended up most most people said that we ended up winning that debate. Um, and then the third and final debate, I actually did use AI. Um, let me see if I can find it. I I, I was on a, my school Chromebook, so I wasn't able to use the uh, use. I, I wasn't able to go into um, writing partners because it was my school Chromebook, and I didn't have my home account loaded on that. So we ended up having to do now comment uh, at the time. Got it. But I can show you real quick. What was it? Yeah, let's check it out. Oh, one second, I'll find it. Just logging in and now comment real quick. Did notice it, but I don't remember. Oh, wait, so. wrong, wrong account. Chris, you said you were in meetings all day today. Yeah, yeah, good. Just, yeah, we go. Up, we yeah. we start back on Monday, uh, back in school. So, oh, in New Jersey, it's a relatively late back to school. Where we, I still have a month, just under a month, like twenty eight days. You're yeah, after so Labor Day, right? Yeah. Yeah, we we are the fourth of September. Nice. Enjoy it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, oh, I, I noticed. Have you? Wait, am, I, am I in the right section? GPT thinking. So, wait. Did you have have our groups been deleted? No. Or is this because I'm? Yeah, my group is just. Oh, that's right. One sec. I keep forgetting that I have to log in with my um, Aditya from Wham's account. My uh, Aditya. And my account. So why, why don't you just tell us about it? What what did right, you learn so from doing it? Yeah. The topic was, you know, I'll just pull it up real quick because I kind of forgot. Okay. Okay. Take your the time. Topic and stuff. We'll figure it out. I do want to I uh, do want to mess around and show you some stuff that Jeremy has been building. Okay. For us. All right. This is a dangerous group. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, David. Oh, hi, Chris. Hi, hi, Aditya. We got, we got David Cole, Aditya, and Chris Sloan. Um, <laughs> it should be fun, guys. Let's okay. See. So Aditya is trying to show us something he did this summer in his. You found it? Yeah. Should I share my screen? Sure. Uh, present. Chris, are you started school yet? Um, we start on Monday. So we're in okay. meetings. Sure. So uh, the, the topic was that the United States should eliminate the Electoral College. So basically what ended up happening for this debate is that in the majority of my debate, I have to prepare the both the, the proposition and opposition side. But for this one, they told us ahead of time which one we were going to be because we only had a day or two to prep instead of the usual month that we have when we're doing competitions. Okay. So where so, did you put the resolution? Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The United States eliminate the extra 
electoral college. Okay. So uh, we came up with the four following arguments. Um, the idea that there should be one person and one vote uh, in the electoral college, um, which in the current system is not. Um, certain votes actually count for more, like a vote in, a vote in Wyoming is uh, more powerful than a vote in California. Uh, mm -hmm. And that, uh, again, disproportionate influence. Um, yeah, stay high level here. We're, we, we can yeah. move through with you. Yeah. So, so we have these four arguments, and then I use the AERI partner. I, I, I didn't really have time to generate evidence, uh, so I just had it. Remind us what AERI stands for. So AERI is an acronym up with uh, assertion, which is the argument, uh, ev evidence, reasoning, and impact. So I had to generate my impact for me, my reasoning and my impact. Uh, so, which helps the judge or judges in this, in our case, understand uh, why our specific arguments actually matter. And then what I ended up doing is that I ended up taking, I was, I was the proposition side. What I ended up doing is I generated some opposition arguments and then I used my side switch partner to generate counter arguments that I could have used. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually managed to use this one and I turn it into an argument that I used in debate, which was um, the history of the Electoral College. So that's generally how I did it. I didn't really generate evidence for this one because we didn't really have that much time. And I knew the other team wouldn't have been generating that much evidence. And most of like the statistics we needed, we could very easily Google. And I think in general, they don't want us like doing uh, generating our own evidence when we're in high school with AI. I think they want us inserting our own evidence like from that we uh, put from websites instead. So like, let me, like, yeah. So go back to the first one for a second. Yeah. When I when I saw this, it was a couple of weeks ago, I think. I I first wondered, eh, is this okay to be generating the whole argument for the judge? So I talk, did talk, talk me through that. Yeah. I did talk. I ended up having a conversation with the high school coach because he was the one teaching the class. And um, what he ended up telling me is that this kind of stuff, like the preliminary brainstorming, is allowed. That's primarily what I'm going to probably focus on and improve. And then uh, the evidence generation, he told me we, we aren't allowed to do that. Um, and the other two things I really didn't get a chance to ask him about, but I think that's more of a gray area. So everything but, you did here is OK? You think? I think most of it. This, the, 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 the most important part, this part, is allowed. But do you, so how do you, is it, is there any other way to use AI that would be more helpful or do you find this really helpful to see all the argument laid out for you? <clears throat> I think it's really helpful. Like just initially, like when you, you don't really understand the specifics of the resolution, just when you get first get the topic, but this help, this kind of helps you. Like it took me a while to figure out, remember, oh yeah, that's what the electoral college is. And this is what uh, banning it would mean. So just kind of initially generating some arguments and going through them is like a good way to like get the wheels turning, brainstorming. I think that's really what they want us to do when we start using AI. So I think okay. this is the perfect balance. I want to obviously improve the system a little more. Uh, but when I start in high school, uh -huh. uh, but this is basically what we were doing. The second week I ended up doing something different. So we didn't really end up using AI in that week, but this is uh, primarily what we did in that camp. Cool. Um, and so we can bring some of this over to writing partners eventually, right? Yeah. Hello, Marina. How are you? Uh, you're muted if you're trying to. Oh, do you hear us yet? I Yeah, okay. I do. Hi. Okay. Okay. I hi. just waved, but hi, oh, everyone. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't see the wave set. All right, so um, let's uh, let's all play a little bit. Let's let's uh, make one. How about that? And Aditya, if the um, A E R I one is not on Writing Partners yet, I don't think. I okay. I if I might have not imported it in yet. I, I'm, yeah, not, I'm, I'm I'm just suggesting that you could you could work on that one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Let me. Um, so this is not at all complete, but we do have a first. We do have a, a, a slight iteration of what happens when you create a writing partner and then you edit it um, and how to mess with it, okay? And, and what happens and how you can test it. So I wanna show you that and then see if you wanna jump in and build one, 
Okay, does that make sense? Yeah. Um, yeah. Does everybody have a Chris? Which which one are you creating now? Do you, or, um, you're doing a couple. Yeah, the latest one I was messing around with is called the News Lead Writing Mentor. So okay, yeah. So you can do that one. Um, and um, Marina, a, a couple a week or two ago, you said you, could I build one? Do you have one in mind that you could try to mess around with and build? I'm just trying to make this real practical for all of us. And David, yeah, you I have too. an idea. Okay, great. And Aditya, you just said. And so let me show you what I did with Chris's. Chris, you did a, when you were in Ireland, you did a um, design partner? Design thinking partner, yeah. Yeah, I made a copy of it. Okay. And I'm going to try to show you the new system. So, and it was based on, there's a few different design uh, yeah, thinking talk models. About, this yeah. one was based on Stanford's D School. Um, uh huh you know, the design thinking stuff. Okay. So boop, boop. I'm now sharing my screen now. Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. So here's where you, here's how, here's how we start. Um, and again, this is just the first step. We're just trying to build. David, do you want to try to say what we're trying to build? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Let me get back to, um, I was just trying to find that chat monitoring partner. <clears throat> yeah. the, so you um, want to go, everyone, you want to go to make a writing partner and find the one you're going to work on. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, one thing I found, I was watching, um, what was happening on the playlab.ai site. And they had a series of panes. If you think of the screen as happening in thirds, say, it could be a full one pane. It could be a split screen 50-50. It could be 30-30-30, so to speak, a third, a third, a third. And uh, one thing that was pretty interesting in terms of their inter their interface, could, and a lot of it was, was happening in writing partners, but it wasn't quite as laid out was you could be authoring your writing partner in one pane and then you could be testing it in the adjacent one and then there was even a third pane that could show up where your writing partner would get critiqued so there was like a steer a, a tiered scaffold of of content creation and um, ai generation that was happening and it was a very meta conversation but quite an interesting workflow so i think what paul's going to try to share and I guess I'm seeing that now in the screen that you're sharing, Paul. Yeah, I mean, just to say we're not there yet. That's mine. Yeah. Yeah, this is, is our yeah. first step. So I yeah, there's yeah, yeah. The is it, so you're seeing Chris. You're seeing your thinking uh, th design thinking curriculum coach. Uh -huh. Then there's your writing partner that you created, and then on the so it's basically a two pane version that mm. lets you sort of see and test your writing partner in one in one screen oh, okay that seems helpful so so you're not getting these pop-ups all the time and going out to pages to make modifications coming back so this is the beginning of trying to integrate the workflow a little bit better and it's thinking of the user as a content author and designer and in this case it's a you know it's kind of what you're doing all the time at ETA. it's what it, you know we all do when we make a writing partner so this was trying to improve the authoring process and the testing process i think that might be and one the, way to put it. The user we have in mind might not be Aditya, by the way. <laughs> no, that's right. They might not. So, yeah, that's right. So that's a compliment, by the way. Aditya, you may you may not need all of this, but you might find it useful too. So we'll see. Um, uh, quick question. Um, sure. Yes. I was just I was just logging on to my writing partner's account, and there's a partner over here that's listed under my name that I don't recognize. Like the text inside it, I don't recognize. Did you create something? It was the. Yeah, it was, it, it was under my account called the uh, debate. Um, what is it? Debate <laughs> argument coach. Yeah, and I'm not, I, I, likely, I likely, yes. I, likely, I went in and was messing around. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> you just descend in there and get 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 crazy and start offering. Don't, don't worry too much about it. <laughs> but thank you. So, so here's the deal. Um, when you first start building it, it all looks the same. When you start to create it. You, you then 
you create it. Then you, when you hit edit, you get this screen here. And what happens is on the left side, the writing partner that you're creating comes up and you can go ahead and test, see what's going on with it, right? See how it works. And I just want to say, Chris, you, one of the things you had was ideate, I think. And, uh -huh. and it yeah. was actually, it was written for a particular stage of the process they were in. Right. So I kind of was, cause there's you know five stages to it. And, and they were in the middle of trying to think about the a prototype for, um, you know, a maker project. And so they weren't in the prototype phase yet. They were in the ID8, which is like, help me think of ideas. It seemed like that was a good place to have AI maybe. And by, by the way, I, I copied it. I didn't just, it's still there. Uh -huh. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, if, if it needed to be used and so forth. Um, but at some point it seemed to me, I wanted to see, this is all, we're just testing stuff, right? Playing. Um, and we there are these other modes. Mm -hmm. that, but whenever, so this is just an example, and I'm just going to talk it through without showing too much here. But it, it seemed like we're trying to get away from getting this big block of text happening, right? Which, which this one still did. So I went back in and did things like, um, I'm going to try to find the sentences because I think they're important to, for us to be considering. Um, so I ended up listing over here on the right side the, the different modes and some description for each mode. Uh -huh. right? um, and then I stayed with your imagine think aloud idea, I think. And right. Um, Paul, a related question. Yeah, go ahead, because I'm looking. There are, we talked about this when you and I spoke last. Um, mm -hmm. There are obviously many uh, resources about the methodology for design thinking. The D school has a ton of them. I don't know if, um, you know, if uh, the AI probably digests PowerPoints as well as documents, right? Um, in this instance, would you, uh, if, if that were not relevant? Very well, yeah, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah okay, I was curious. Mm -hmm. But if Chris has, if Chris has, say, uh, a document that does a decent how-to or does some explanatory information about it, is this something that could be added to it? Where you know, if Chris has got an outline that he's sort of referencing as resource material as he authors this, speaking about Chris as though he's not here, um, is that something that can be added to this? Would it just be added at the bottom, like an end note to part of the writing so partner? So here's, here's the thing. My that's where I got these this description. Now, I did not cite it. But that um, is where I got this description. So you you copy and paste it directly into your prompt, right? And it's it's not like it was a single document that you could say reference this document. Or after you go and formalize the priority stuff that you've interpreted, you've translated, you've prioritized. If there's a reference document that it's meant to digest, is that even is that even relevant or useful at this point? If one's building a writing partner in relation to primary or secondary sources. So it's just, yeah, so we're, <laughs> what I'm saying is that I don't, s I mean, there absolutely may be, and you know, we can build it, um, a use. I guess that's something, for, that's something, uh, you know, that, that's there, something to test, yeah. There is a use for doing that, but, but you can, but to some degree, I, I think it's uh, um, my own, my own creative process here, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think I think I think it's I think it's just as easy to just take the resource and pop it into the prompt, right? And say, sure. Hey, here's the prompt, and that's following um, um, OpenAI's guidelines. To, to let me, kind of let me yeah, yeah, let me push back briefly. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm suddenly forgetting the name of the the, the, the sort of mustache, the good mustache bald guy who's the IDEO founder guy. I, you've seen him a jillion times. David, yeah. Yeah, there, there are lots of books that have been created about design thinking. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, you know, to the extent the AI can scan a book or a chapter, draw out its own understanding of what the priorities are in that context, add those to what you have authored or scripted, potentially the AI would be smarter. I don't agree. <laughs> so okay. I think I think you need to be smart enough to pick the stuff 
yeah, that, you, I that get it. you want it to do rather mm -hmm. than rather than have AI kind of arbitrarily choose stuff. Well, I guess yeah. Um, yeah. So, because yeah. we're looking at this document here, mm -hmm. one of the things I thought was like, couldn't I just put a link to, you know, like Stanford's website or a, a document? So I tried to boil it down to, in one way, it was helping me make sense of this thinking. So like I was mm -hmm. actually, by editing it, I feel like I was kind of like explaining it to someone. Well, in this case, they were my students. But if I were to explain it to someone, this would be how I would start. But I did, it did cross my mind. Like it would be interesting if there were a direct link to some PDF that was even in more detail. But then I thought, oh, well, I'll, that's the end of that thought. How about, I, I no, was wondering uh, that. I think, I, no, think I, I would like to have both. And and, and you, right? I, yeah, I think, I think the failure yeah. of this is that people will get, you know, oh, I'll just have it write the email for me. I'll just have it summarized for me. I'll just have it do this stuff. It's rote work. And, we're talking about the opposite of rote work. And I understand your point, Paul, you wanna be able to be the author, you wanna direct it, you wanna prioritize, but also to the extent there's a backdrop and that can be foregrounded and there's some rhetorical emphasis in the prompt guide and the creation of the partner, perhaps that can be served as backdrop. There might be some directions. I mean, this is something to test. I mean, I think it's an yeah, interesting yeah, yeah. thing to test out. I totally agree with you. Um, so if we, I, I, think we will, I think we will still always need the prompt to point mm -hmm. to what in that what in that resource you want to yes. use, right? Sure. So I don't think that's any different than than what we've done <laughs> we're, that well, we're doing already inside our prompts. And one corollary yeah. question is because I've yeah. written some long prompts as a yeah. right. Um, yeah. Is there like is there a limit? Does it ever work so hard because it's trying to go through this text that uh, that's too long of a prompt? You know, Chris, that's a really good question. I don't know the answer to it. And Paul, you had mentioned, quote, there's a term floating around prompt stuffing a while back. You read some of Ethan Mollick's prompts, and they're pretty extensive. Like, they're really didactic in terms of what they direct. So, so yeah, the thing is the thing is that the answer to that keeps changing, right? Yeah. As they, as they expand context, right? So right now, we, we, we have not been able to find the, the upper limit. Um, and we, and have, a, we have prompts that go on for five pages. Right? But does I'm that also, affect performance, I guess, is my right. question. Like if I'm in a classroom of 25 kids, which I will be, you know, starting next week. The answer is, is yes, but you won't notice it. Yeah, I guess that's my question it's, is, it's am a, I writing prompts that are going to make cycle. it slow for the multiple users who are using it? And so should I be as concise as possible? Our, our, and, our experience so far is no. Okay. And a corollary corollary question to your point, Chris, for me is, what are the what are the rhetorical moves that happen in the prompt that generate better results mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the output? Yeah. So you know, if it is really directing the the, the the bot to deliver samples that include an example, and then a critique of the example, and then another one that are no longer than a hundred words, followed by you know a, a line break. And it does that and it creates digestible content. That would be interesting to know. Yeah, there are simple rhetorical shifts like always, I don't know, always end in a question and never be longer than that. I'm just really curious what it is that tends to make it more usable and um, where efficacy is higher as a result of what it spits back for the user, you know, mm -hmm. and how. Yeah. And so if we find that we are tripping over some of that or just developing it again through iteration, that would be good to know. You know? Yeah, so we should keep track of these things, and these are the kinds of things we're testing and playing with. I, I, I do want to point out, I, I finally found it, sorry, but this paragraph right here, right, that I just highlighted. Imagine, think aloud to show, do okay. and imagine, think aloud to show the kinds of questions and thinking you might be doing as you think through each of the mode of design thinking assess my plan as represented in the selected text ask me questions that include quotations from my plan uh plan it's my plan and, and my, my text. text make questions relevant to my plan give me one set of questions at a time hide the question questions and ask me if i want to see more yeah that's a version of providing very direct instructions in terms of how it delivers what it's going to deliver. Sure. But the and, thing the thing that we weren't able to do before the current model, um, the LLM model, but we can do now and does work. It's, so I want to point this out, 
is this last part here. Um, so um, hide the other questions and ask me if I want to see more. Hmm. Give me one set at a time. Right? Okay. Pretty simple. <laughs> but, Are you saying that the new model can't do this or the old model? It can. The old model can't. And in your the testing, model, Paul, are you finding that it, it's a response to your front, your, your, yeah, your so, so, so over here on the left side, over here on the left side, let me show you, I'm trying to find the example here. So um, I said, I, I, I want to build a physics. Did I say that? I think I did. Yeah, there was something about physics and <laughs> the Olympics. Sorry. Yeah, I want to use the Olympic events to develop a phys physics plan, right? So the design thinking curriculum coach said, uh, great, here's, here's some questions um, the, to kind of start with. This is using the em empathetic mode. And then it says, um, and then you can, it gives you a choice. Do you want to move on or do you want to stay in that mode, right? So it's only giving you one mode at a time mm -hmm. kind of thing. And, you know, I didn't do it, but you could go in and reply and put your plan in as you're going. So this is kind of working that way. And Chris, the, um, the editor thing, I, I kind of built this way as well. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if there's a better example of this. So is that making some sense? Um, yeah. Everyone, um, Yeah, so there are different ways to mess with it, but the, and and I, I there is a, there is a place where I'm starting to collect these sentences we know work, right? So give me one, give me one set of questions at a time. That's something that we should should play with, because you know, as we know, getting that large mm -hmm. um, brick of text is not going to help anybody, right? Or kids aren't going to read it, basically. But I, I want to show you, so when you update here, right, um, what happens is you can come down here and start a new conversation, or you can start right at the top. You can also, though, like if these old ones, I haven't done this yet, and it was broken, but it works now. These old ones, you can go to and under comment options, archive the comment, right? And then that comment will disappear. It's up here. You can get it out again if you want to. So this becomes your sort of work pad to see how things are working. Right? Worth knowing also, you can put in this much text in the boxes now. You don't. Uh, when you're work, working with AI, there's no limit to that. I'll explain that again. This question statement box, you can put as much text as you want to in it. Um, so you could put a whole document there that you wanted to analyze. All right. Um, who's working and who wants to think about something else here? Well, I just want to maybe. Well, one of the things I'm thinking about, and then I'll Good. let other people talk. Do you want to, do you want to, do you want to share a screen? And that, I think that's a smart idea. I can. Or do you want to just talk? <laughs> well, I just big picture, you know, I'm teaching, yeah. we could call it journalism to high school students. And um, so, you know, I'm trying to break it down into manageable steps. So the, the idea would be they'd probably do a brain dump of what they know about whatever, you know, back to school story they're going to do coming up in the next week. There's a new teacher. So it's like, ah, here's all I know. Um, after they have that brain dump, what I'd like to do is introduce them to the idea of different types of leads and just do that. Like that would be the focus. So that's why I did like, it's called news editor leads. So I'm imagining this, you know, person at a news desk in a newsroom and some writer coming to them with some copy, they would call it. And, and that person getting some advice. That's, that's kind of what I was thinking with it. Could we go, one of the things you said last week also was um, you're realizing that you could use AI sooner in the process than you did mm, last yeah. year. Yeah. yeah so I think last we, year. What does that mean, Chris, sooner in the well, process? Well, I came, a, you know, I would um, have the kids use AI 
when they were in the latter stages of an assignment, oh, let's say. And right. so they were kind of, they're seniors and they're like, I'm done with this thing. And it'd be interesting <laughs> to them, but it wasn't, um, yeah. you know, like at the brain dump phase. So that's where I want to sure. try to, you know, get some work. So, you know, if they're just writing a draft of a news story, what are some different ways you could start this? Or are you attributing quotes correctly uh, as far as, you know, associated press style, that kind of stuff? Yeah. Uh -huh. So, could, could, would you would it be okay if we played with um, an a both yeah. a both a process and using writing partners for it for the brain dump part? Sure, because uh, I, yeah, I think that's the... kind of important because that's about yeah. Anyway, and and can you go in and edit or no duplicate? Uh, yeah, good question. Well. I have an example Sorry. of kind of a brain dump story a kid did about snow day. Okay. Um, last year, you know, that we had a snow day and, and it was, it's kind of a draft he turned in, which struck me as kind of a, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't a news story. So it's, that story is called snow day. I think it's a public document. I think could be wrong. Well, you're, you're, you're going to share screen. So as long as you can get to it. That's, okay. That's... All right. Let me uh, get there here first. Here's what I was thinking, though. There is a getting started one. Yeah. And I'm wondering if we could demonstrate editing that one so that it that, that it does what you want the brain dump thing to do. Okay. Is that okay to go that slow here? <laughs> yeah. So um, let me share here. Aditya, are you working on something? Is the edit thing working? Or? Yeah, I don't want to monopolize everything. No, I haven't really it. tested out the edit thing yet. Um, okay, okay. Uh, I was but, just checking. Yeah. yeah, I was just thinking. It's okay, okay to monopolize it. You're, you're not really. Share my screen, I believe. Maybe. Okay, and I want to go to... Oh. It says uh, Google Chrome would like to record this computer screen. What does it say that? On my end here. I'm on Chrome. Your sharing screen, present? Yeah, I hit present, yeah. So I That's probably just Google, like, see if you should, like, do you really want this tab to have access to your screen? Yeah, yeah but it's taken me to a... Uh, um, my point is maybe, Paul... We might okay. it'd be better to share from your screen because I have to go into preferences currently. I will do that. Yeah. And I have access to that document. Okay. Uh, okay. Trying to think about this from a teacher's point of view too, but um, should we? What, what should we do next? Look at the document. So yeah. Tell, tell tell us more about what your assignment is. The, um, the, tell what, you more what, about what. Dump. What do you ask them to do when you ask them to brain dump? Um, come with a draft of, let's say, you know, next week it'll be come with a draft of a news story. We're back in school and they're going to interview someone on the first day of school about, uh, and that someone could be a new teacher, could be a student or whatever, you know. Um, uh, I mean, I have the assignment, but I think you, can, you get the idea, right? I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. So what kind of feedback would you want the AI to do? I'm not sure. So yeah, go ahead. if we were to open up the story Snow Day, mm -hmm. that, I mean, this was like a news story written when um, we had a big storm. And it is not a finished story. So this strikes me as, I mean, maybe it's a little more structured than a brain dump, but it's pretty close of just like, here's what's going on. Like that does not look like a news story. So that person could use some help structurally um, with the whole thing. But there's enough there that I think um, the lead editor could give that some feedback to complicate matters. And I just did a one draft of what's called my 
news editor the and so it's not it's not given the feedback i wanted to yet that's this one here that one was no, no, the ap style, style editor yeah. yeah and down below maybe i've done a few i know we've been both you and i've been testing right now. yeah um there's a news editor there it is yeah okay so this is one so what you have here is one approach to doing this right right but this one what i don't like i you know again you can see what i asked it to do it's actually like giving a suggested revision which is a problem because some students would just copy that and call it good right copy sure. the first one so i would um want in this case since this person has a basic idea the idea would be then Here's some other ways maybe to start it. Just focus on how to open something like this. So let me ask. Uh, let me ask the group. Uh, Can we take a pause? And uh, here, uh, here, I wanted to say something that I want. I want to make it a more meta comment. Like mm -hmm. I've also struggled with that question, and we've been asking it now for about a month, and it came up with something of a solution. How do I share that solution out, right? Do, do you know what I mean? So I could show you right now, and maybe this is what we're doing. Did I ask the question clearly? I got lost to silence. So I'm not sure. Here. Okay. When you say so, how do you share it out, Paul, what are you referring to? Well, so I could go right now and say, hey, I was working on that one with the, with the AP style I called it a tutor to distinguish it from your editor, uh, the AP style tutor. And if you go inside the AP style tutor, you'll find um, some language about give me an example for my text and don't give me, you know, don't don't make it up, but you know, don't get don't revise my own text. Mm -hmm. um, I could just tell you that I guess at TTT. I just wondering if there's a way to like for for us to establish, like, here's the set of problems we're working on, and here are the answers to those, right? I'm just, I'm just talking right now, <laughs> but and thinking it through. Well, what I was going to do next was examine Go your ahead. prompt and look at mine and what was different. So I think something in there is just what you're talking about, like. Do you, shall we should we look at the news editor? Yeah, let's well let's let's look at yours maybe cuz mine this, didn't this, give me the output I wanted. It was actually the AP revising. style? Yeah, the AP style editor. Well, let's see what happens. Then. Okay. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go to uh, and maybe see. just get feedback on the first sentence even. Um oh because yeah. you want the the lead yeah just ask that ap Ooh. editor about the lead oh that's an interesting question because there is parts of that that speaks just to the lead parts of the prompt so i'm double clicking on the first sentence i'm asking ai i'm going here we're using the one i was messing with yeah here. we're doing an ap editor yeah Okay, I'm right. It's the AP style tutor. So okay. I uh -huh. have <laughs> re revised. My, okay, and I'm going to say, hey, could you help me with the lead? Yeah. Look, David, I'm spelling it right. <laughs> oh, I, I allow them to spell it uh, in L E A D form. <laughs> I know. Um, I notice AP spells it L E D E. Though. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. I'm like, okay. Okay. So it comes up with sure. Let's start with the first area accuracy and fairness. So it doesn't go to the lead, but um, what's the sentence, by the way? Could you read On that quickly? Old February night, high school students around the valley are faced with anticipation. Rumors have been circling that school will be canceled due to snow day. Um, 
So we could try my, uh, we could try the different, um, like, yeah. well, let's, let's see try my does. news lead editor and see what it gives us. It's going to okay. actually. Okay, but do, do you, what do you think about what this did? Before? Well, it didn't. It didn't go to the lead, but it does no. say verify the facts. Are you yeah. sure the students are from around the entire valley or something? Because that, I Check mean, yeah, comments. that um, AP style editor is doing more than just looking for the lead. So I, I did the thing that was just the news editor lead um, thing. Um, okay. Yeah. So that one, it, it is the prompt is definitely good. just about the lead. You guys, I gotta step away for a second. I'm still listening. Okay, cool, cool. Um, we're just working here. <laughs> yeah. Um, you, so it's called newsletter editor. Lead. News editor news lead, I believe it is called. Oh. Yeah, news editor dash leads. So the news editor is just looking at the leads. Did do you know if you were able to share it to a group? You know, I can't. I'm going to the edit panel. Yeah. And so when I click edit, when I click edit, I don't see how to make it a public. Um... So here's the thing: you can, as a teacher, yeah, you can only share to your class, okay, right, your group. Okay, so I'll um, share it to news writing can, right now. Oh, you can do that. Oh, because you've been in you're an admin. Okay, group. I'll share it. I just shared it with news writing, so it should be okay. in that group. Yep, you solved the problem. Uh, where is it? Okay, this is snow day. Yeah. It's good we're opening it up again because now I'm going to the first sentence and we're going to ask AI and we're going to say so well we'll get back to the, the thing that Jeremy created. Do you do you know which group it's in? I put it um it's news editor and i think i put it in it's in ai's mentor providing feedback very good come on huh. i'm not seeing it yet and that's because like i don't know on the new editor panel i don't see a one where it can it might just be private Okay. And I can't change that. Here's what we're going to do. I got this. We're going to copy this. And I'm going to, we're going to go here. And we're going to go to the news editor. You call it news editor. It's It'll be on this list. Uh, right. News editor and then leads. Leads. Yep. Going to edit. Okay. So now we're practicing the new format. All right. Uh -huh. If yeah. everybody wants to look up and kind of see what we're doing here. So this is what you have so far. You have a and by uh, news writing. You put it in news writing. That's cool. So do you want to tell us what you did over here so far? Yeah. So so okay. far I've got I'm imagining someone who's an experienced news editor and then this person knows what effective news is that because they've spent a long time editing basically and their goal their purpose is to improve news leads for writers and they're going to use the imagine think aloud technique um and then they're going to provide detailed step-by-step -step guidance for improving a writer's news lead uh and i also suggest other possible types of news lead a writer might consider using and then there's this section about like well what makes an effective lead paragraph and and these are the types of leads so i'm trying to you know train it on things that i would imagine this editor knows so that mm -hmm. then there's each lead has an exam a definition an example did you write these or where did you get I these from? edited them from like a you know a text about news leads okay so i mean it's so right yeah. wow that's cool <laughs> no i'm just uh no i don't think this this looks so but here's where i think it broke down is like the task that i had it do i will suggest ways that the writer might make the lead 
submitted more effective by analyzing whether it features the most important aspects of the story and whether the writer has considered questions like who cares and so on. I will then suggest one other promising type of lead that the writer might try for this story. And I'll be I'll end by asking the writer what else they would like to work on. So this was like a first draft kind of attempt. And, and the problem is like the suggestion part when it spits out an exam, you know, I, I worry that people are just going to copy that and, and just call it good. Okay. Let me just um, question, um, and, and then we'll come back to what you just said. The, um, and I hope this is helpful to somebody, <laughs> this dialogue between Chris and me, and you guys should interrupt as we go. But um, so when you say as an experienced news editor, I can identify the type of lead the writer submitted. Who is the I in that sentence? Yeah, so I'm thinking that the persona is written in the first person. Like, yeah. I am an experienced news editor. I don't. I think you want to think of it instead as a instruction to an actor. Okay. Okay. So you want it to be you. Okay. You can identify. Okay. So I'll change the person there. Yeah. I mean, look, we're all. Yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do over here on the left side, oh, first of all, I'm going to go in, reply with AI, and I'm going to say, hey, here's a store. Here's a brain dump story that I'm working with. And I can I can go in and I can paste. This is new that you can do this much here, by the way. I can paste the whole story here and ask that question. And it, notice it's stuck on the news editor leads. Uh -huh. I'm going to hit continue. And it's going to come up here on the left side. This is this is as, but I didn't ask anything about the. Well, let's see what it does, right? I'm going to hit reply, and it does what? Here's the essay, or yeah, the, the brain dump. Okay, so it looks like it uh, verbatim gave the quote the start back to um and it is analyzing it for some news values that are actually in the prompt uh -huh. um but what i don't like is that i had it revise the student's work for them where does it do that um, oh, this revised the revised lead. lead oh this is the revised lead here oh i see yeah and that's what i wouldn't want to do I would just want to have them think about how they might use different leads. Okay, where do you say that here, over here? Um, so I try to say that one. I can identify the type of lead, that first sentence, and talk about the effectiveness. So I did that. I will suggest ways the writers might make the lead that was submitted more effective by analyzing whether it features the most important aspects of the story. So it kind of did that. But the part where it breaks down, I think, is the last second to last sentence, I will then suggest one other promising type of lead that the writer might try for this. So that sentence right there that you're hovering over, I will it then did suggest. that and I, I actually, I don't want that, so. Oh, so what do you want instead? Um, well, it's more like, I want this person to think about other types of leads. Okay, how about yeah. we do this? Do not. Do not re rewrite the lead. Because you don't want it to, right? And it tends right. to want to. Yeah. What do you want it to do instead, though? Do not I would like to have that writer consider other leads, other types of leads. Um, prompt the writer to consider other types of leads. Uh -huh. yeah. Instead, yeah. Uh, say the prompt. Prompt the writer. Prompt me. To, prompt me, okay. Yeah. yeah. To consider other promising types of leads, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I can see like the person in my descriptions probably confuse things. So I should refer to you like I'm I'm creating the actor. Yep. And then refer and to the writer. The writer is me. Yeah. Me. Okay. Tell yeah. Me. Okay. Um, is it tra it trains the um, AI to do that too? It, okay. It, it lets it. Yeah. So I'm probably going to have to go back and revise this because in other places now I've got I and you know. Well, let me just see one yeah. one other promising. <laughs> yeah. So we can okay, delete wait. that. Okay. I will end by asking. Oh, and by the way, notice all I'm doing is getting rid of I will, and it's fine. Okay. You're just, you're just giving it a directive. Uh -huh. And by asking the writer, or asking me. Yeah, and then I mean, there's a lot of things that I would need to fix. Okay, but let's see. So here's just theoretically. Yeah. We're going to update this. Right. And we can, um, no, if I had put that up there, that would have worked better, but that's okay. Not me. Let me do that. No, let's, okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to do another version here. Okay. I'm going to go here and, um, what do you think of the need? of my lead I paste the whole article I do this and let's see if it gives the example now so this is this is the theory that you can go back and forth edit over here update it come back okay. here and see if it did it or not right um what do we have now well you know I'm not clear because I wanted it to judge it by whether it thought it was accomplished, sufficient, developing, or needs improvement. And you can see it kind of comments on each of the categories. Mm -hmm. uh, so. But, but what about where, where this, the thing we changed? What does yeah. That... So then down here, let's see. Consider focusing. You can see essential details then is how it's popping up. Considerations for improvements. Um, consider focusing more immediately oh. on the emotional impact. So that's good. Yeah, that's better. So, so it changed it. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And then it's, it's saying, you know, think about using like an anecdotal lead, zinger lead. It's reminding of what it is. Okay. Yeah. So this is um, along. It's better. Yeah. Now, just, just so we know how all this works, I'm in here editing, right? When I go back in and edit, I will be able to see what's going on on the left side. Your version of it is going to be your own. But yeah. when we save it over here, um, that's going to save for everybody who's using this partner. Okay. Okay. Um, so does that mean there's two news editor dash leads or? No. Just one. Well, no, okay. I, that'll yeah. have your revision. But there, there are two. There are two things playing with it on the left side, or there are as many as people who go in and out. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh, it's under. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah. Do you want I'm it good for now? I know what I need to. I'm going to change that prompt a little bit. But let's go to if other people want to say some stuff. Um, I, while you guys were doing this, I also started revising my um, my uh, debate creation teammate, the debate yeah. argument creation teammate. So do you uh, want to take over the screen? Uh, sure. Okay. So over here. Wait, I, I need, I need to get there. Hold on a second. Uh, how do I stop? So. I see it now. Go ahead. So uh, I did a couple things. First, uh, I added, so I essentially revised two times and updated. So the first time I uh, um, I changed it from eighth to ninth grade, where I tried to put the, I tried to make it less, like, talk like an eighth grader and be like, you are a ninth grader. So I upgraded it, I updated it to be my um, the next grade. Uh, and then I also added this section here. Come up with four to five different arguments and provide a uh, 
an explanation slash context surrounding the argument in a way that could go on, uh, that that could go um, that one could go and add their own statistics, data, and quotations. Aditya, where was your original from? Uh, the original was from. Um, it was it. It was there already. It was in that comment. It was in, okay. under my. Management. Okay, so you're starting this now. Go ahead. Okay, got it. Yeah. And what um, what is this one called? This is the. This the one's in um, writing partners. This is got it. Yeah. Okay. So originally, this is what um, I think someone. I think you went in and created this uh, after I did this. Oh yeah, yeah. That's what I did. I I just copied one from now comment and put it here. Go ahead. Yeah. So. I, so you can see, like, if we compare the first revision to this, uh -huh. um, it's giving a better explanation of the um, of of the each argument. Um, overall, the arguments are similar, but the way it explains it, I find a little more clear. And why do you think that is? Uh, it's giving a little bit, like, for example, let's try to take um, uh, what's arguments. Let's try. Historical context. Um, so over here just says that um, communication and information dis uh, discrimination uh, dissemination are limited today with modern technology. Voters are more informed and connected than ever, making the original reasons for um, the electoral college less relevant. Over here, um, it starts the context of a new. It, it starts talking about what America was in the 18th century, like how we were a newly formed nation. And also um, it never, uh, it doesn't align with Democrat, with contemporary values, which I find now, important. I know then, you explained this already, but I wasn't paying close enough attention yet. That that, one, that change became, came in when you added what paragraph on the right? I side? added, um, I changed it to ninth grade from eighth grade. And then I also uh, modified this. Uh -huh. Um, Got it. and also out of this, uh, previously I, I noticed that I didn't, I just said that it was an argument and I, I never said what I was actually going to be using it for. So over here, I was like, try to come up with the arguments with the purpose that you will debate these against an opposing side in a competitive high school debate format. Okay. And then I noticed one thing, which was when I was looking at this argument, which was that one of the key things when I debated this was I mentioned something known as the three fifth compromise, which if it's uh, which, if you remember, is um, it was a compromise that originally, when the electoral college was founded, meant that slaves in states, which ha which is still which ha allowed slavery, um, they would be counted as three fifths of a person for the purposes of an elect of the electoral college. Which in both examples over here, I noticed were uh, were not mentioned. So I added this one last line in, which is that if relevant, add examples and anecdotes. And then that over here, if you see over, um, you can see over here it was a. Uh, it was also influenced by the desire to maintain balance between slaves and non-slave states, right? Which is something that I felt was extremely important. Um, fun fact about this argument specifically it was the last argument we did in camp, and I ended up um, showing this to what like, the entire camp, which is not just the people in my class, but also people who are doing other classes plus all their parents. So I got to debate this in front of like what a hundred people at least, maybe two hundred. Oh. It goes one hundred twenty-five kids alone, plus probably like seventy-five of their parents, like two hundred people. So I think that was one thing that I found important. So mm -hmm. I, I think I'm I, I think the the uh, edits that I've made have improved have improved. Uh, so so how do you how do you like this setup that we've kind of invented here? Um, we're, we're I think it's nice from so somewhere else. One maybe. critique I was just thinking about, which. Good, didn't good. really affect it right now, but if you do something that um, you realize you didn't, you uh, ended up having a negative impact. Let me just stop this. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Then so there's no way to like really go back. So it would be nice if there's like a way to just test, like a test button where you could uh, test something, see how, see what would happen, and then you could push it out as an update. Hmm. Just a thought. I mean, overall, it's not that big of a deal. You could probably just like. No, that's an interesting thought. Yeah, like if so, I noticed that the ninth grade was making it too high level for me to understand, then I I would want to be able to uh, go back and I forgot what I did originally. Then it would be nice to kind of uh, figure that out. I mean, you uh, kind of have nice to have the old version saved before I permanently delete that one. Like a revision history. Yeah, exactly. 
like control Z, but in this, for like this. Yeah, I got it. I'll bring that up. Who knows? <laughs> it, it all depends on how hard it is to do, how hard it is to do. But good. That was a really good example of playing with this. Thank you. Marina, did you get very far or do you have any thoughts or questions or? Yeah. I made something. <clears throat> do you want to show or? Um, do sure. Or do you want to just talk it through? Okay. I know it's over time. So if everyone has to go, I get it. How do I do? Oh. Um, so I read this book by, well, I don't know if anyone's familiar with Charles Duhay called Super Communicators. And it's typically, it's actually really more for like oral communication, back, verbal back and forth with people. But while I was reading it, I felt that it made a lot of sense to think about, especially with, um, narrative reflective writing with the goal of, um, being presented in a format such as a TED talk or a moth talk or something of that sort. So I wanted to adapt the big questions that Charles Duhigg, um, do I think I'm saying that right. Um, presents in his book for the types of conversations that people have, which are, um, what is this really about? How do we feel about this? And who are we? And I wanted to adapt that to writing to ensure that um, somebody who is creating a piece would be heard and seen in a way that they want to be um, understood, but also um, to see if they're addressing those types of questions within their own personal conversation with their writing. Um, so I just, I don't know, like I just was, I don't know, I just started writing it and I took the questions from here and I kind of made a frame and I added some quotes from the book. Uh -huh. I got them on Goodreads. Um, and then I guess as soon as I pressed create, it gave me the pain, the second pain, like you guys were saying. Mm -hmm. So I just put in one of my poems and then that I wrote really recently and um, it, it did set it up the way I asked it to. I said, you know, make, put it in a question and answer format with the three questions. And I thought the information was that it gave back was very responsive to what I wrote and what I had hoped the poem expressed, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um. So I'd want to try it with some other things and then probably actually I, it also made me think of some other stuff too. So I don't know. That's all. That's all I have. <laughs> cool. Oh, great. Yeah. I like how you, I think uh, I've been doing that too, where I put in some quotes that are examples of this thing. Mm -hmm. And that's where I was like, am I telling it too much? Like giving it too many examples that it doesn't need, but um, yeah, that's cool. You're doing the same thing. I, yeah, I I mean, I don't know. I got that idea from what you did with Adam Grant's Paul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just because I was like, well, how would it know? Like, if it doesn't know, like, what type of, like, framing, I felt like it would give it more insight. It didn't spit back anything verbatim at all, which I was, ha like, from the quotes, which I was happy about. I didn't want to see that necessarily. Um, that wasn't really what I wanted. So, hmm. would you just in terms of the again the the large <laughs> the lot of text to read through? Would you want it to give you one of these at a time? In other words, to just say, okay, first. Well, I don't know. Play. I don't really like. I don't really like how long the responses are. Yeah, so um, that's what I'm on saying. On writing partners in general. Like, and actually, one of the things I did was I, let me stop sharing. I looked at advanced settings and I tried to reduce the amount of language. Um, I think that's something like when we talk about possibility of younger 
Well, it doesn't even necessarily have to be younger people. It could be anybody, right? Yeah. When it's too much, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's great. It's great information, but sometimes it's too much. Yeah. You know, it's but, like but a whole other piece that I have to read and comprehend. And, um, and, and again, I am by my, you know, you're, it, you are by yourself, right? So like, that's that part that's a little different than actually sitting with a person who can like, you can have a, a conversation around it. Not mm -hmm. a bad thing, just a different thing. Mm -hmm. But, but what I was, and no, um, what I was suggesting is in the prompt you've created, you could go in and say, please only give me one paragraph at a time. Right. And it'll mm -hmm. do that for you. So mm -hmm. I encourage you to play with that a little bit. Um, yeah. As you go here. Well, this is the but first iteration. I know. I don't know. No. I'm, just, I'm just, just suggesting that there are ways we can control that. Right. And we're learning how to do that. Going into advanced settings is also a great idea. And by by the way, it's it's up like four thousand. Yeah. You can you can bring it down to like five hundred, and it still works. That's so, what I did. Yeah. But I still think it gave me. You still got a lot. I know. Yeah, it's combined it's, with it's also good. telling. It's just it's just it's a lot of reading afterwards, and well, I, just I don't think, think that... it. I don't think it is. I I think. The content is good, but the presentation is not going to work for a lot of kids, mm -hmm. a, a lot of a lot of anybody. Oh yeah, I was so, going to say a lot of people. Like it's, a, yeah. you know, yeah. if if there's another way, it's, it's for like. Um, it is, but we're working on that. Yeah. Like maybe so, like certain. I mean, like no, there was there's what is it? Um, I have so I mean some things came out bolded. That's good. I mean, if there was a way to have like um a different color like a color coded system for like emphasizing strong th i don't know i don't know what that system would be but mm. um or something visual i don't know okay. but i do like how it, it did break there is space also in between mm -hmm. um it's it's you know kind of bulleted so it, it the the format is not it's not um busy it's not like distracting it's just a lot yeah all right <laughs> thanks for playing with it did you find the edit back and forth between the left and right screen helpful or do you think that's i probably yeah. would i just i just finished it now oh okay so i think that um yes i would i would but also i'm curious um, and if you were talking about this while I was working, I don't know. Does it save the iterations? No, but it's like, interesting. You want that too. Because the detail. Did somebody else say that and I missed it? Yes. No, it's yeah, okay. I was saying we could have like a way to kind of save it temporarily so that when you, you can test it out. And then, um, and then if you decide that that's the iteration of the partner you want to go with, you can update it. And if, if you find that what it's doing is actually not positive, uh, is not uh, what you want it to do, then you can either change it again or go back to the old version. Yeah, I mean, I think that's like a, a really reflective exercise in itself too. Like just to be able to see like, I mean, I guess you could save it all in a document, but it'd be kind of cool to see it. No, you want it all there. I, yeah. if, there were, if there were a button that just gave you the history, would that be enough? Yes, I think so. Yeah, okay. I would want. I, I bet, would want I to be like, possible. okay, yeah. if I took out one part, like, how right. much does that change what I'm getting back? Or if I added in one part, you know? And sometimes we forget what mm. exactly we did from one thing to the next. Yeah. This is a very. This is a little design thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Thank you all. It's we're way over time. Thank you. So all much. right. Um, we'll be uh, Aditya. Send me sometime the image you want for your group. For your debate. Uh, okay. Uh, is there don't, you? Yeah. Don't okay. stress on it, but you know, just yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll try to get around to it. Um, and stay dry. Aditya hasn't been able to go to the pool because the the lightning. Yeah. Has uh, apparently, I just looked. Um, uh, you know that tropical storm that went through the southeast? Yes. Um, it's coming here. I know. <laughs> like, um, and I think I think my town just narrowly is like in the edge of the predicted path. So I don't think the weather's getting better anytime soon. Stay safe. 
All right. Adicia, See you again soon. Adicia, I just wanted to tell you, you said you were doing that great ideas TED Talk thing. For, with your oh, teacher. yeah. Um, I have That's, to get around to emailing with Sidoransky. Yeah, I was going to say, I just got an email today that it's due in a couple of weeks. So Yeah, just, yeah. I know. I'm, you're I'm, very I'm, responsible, but I, I thought of you when I saw the email come through. Yeah. So it is it is, it coming, is coming along. <laughs> Did, you've already recorded it, TT, or no? I have an earlier draft that's about half the required time. So I just need to figure out how to extend it. Okay. Anyways, uh, have a cool. great day. You too. Bye. Talk to you all soon. Bye. Bye.